Hey everybody, we're here to talk about how to build a water cooling loop. And one of the most important steps of doing this is to plan out exactly what you're going to need. So basically what I'm going to do is take a screenshot of our case here. And we're going to talk about planning it out and what needs to be moved, removed, or what you need to put in it. And this will help you determine what you need to buy. You can waste a lot of money on buying too many components or fittings for your case. So the first step of this is what we're going to remove. We're going to take out all this hard drive tray space as uh, we'll be using our five and a quarter space. So anything in the orange here will be removed and made into space for tanks and radiators. The next step is we're going to put our two tanks here. We'll be running two separate lines, one through the video cards and one through the CPU RAM block main board chips. Our tanks will go here. The next step is what components are we going to cool with this? We're going to cool our video cards and our CPU RAM block motherboard. So we're going to put those in and determine what next we need. So we're going to have two separate lines here. So that means we're going to need two radiators. Those will go at the top of the case up here in orange. These will be two 360 millimeter rads uh, radiators that we'll be putting into the case. It also means six case fans. We'll be using two separate pumps for this, one for each reservoir. Those will go down here at the bottom, they are in yellow. Let's talk about running the lines next. So we're going to need a line from the video card, a video card to video card, then video card up to the radiator at the top, and then from the radiator down to the reservoir, to the inlet. And then the second line will be from the second reservoir into the RAM block, RAM block into CPU, CPU into the chipset block, and then into the radiators, and then back into the reservoir. Now we can build our list of items. This will give you a good idea of what you need to buy to complete your loop. You will need a cooling liquid. I'll be using uh, an EK non-conductive and also basically has the contain the corrosive inhibitors and also the biological inhibitor so nothing grows in my line. So we need the reservoirs, pumps, radiators, the fittings we'll need, and then fans and the tubing as well. Uh, I also want to take just a few seconds to talk about the fittings themselves. You have to determine what type of fitting you're going to use. Uh, there's two main fitting types. One is a compression fitting, which is like this one here, and then the other one is a barbed fitting. The compression fitting is basically a screw-on cap that pulls the hose down onto the barb itself. Uh, these are a little bit more secure, give you a little bit more peace of mind of basically that your tubing is not going to leak. And it, honestly, I think it just looks a little bit cooler. This is what I'll be using. So basically, you just push your tubing onto the barb. Have to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Then you take the cap and you slide it on and then you twist it down and that'll go ahead and compress the tubing onto the barb. The opposite of that is the barb fitting itself, which is basically the compression fitting without the compression portion. At the barb itself, you insert it into the tube and then you use a clamp to hold it on. Now this actual barb is too big for the tubing, but you can get the idea of what we're using here to clamp it down. If you want some additional information, you can check out overclockers.com or extremesystems.com. Those are some good forums to check out, give you some ideas and some ticks and tricks. Really what you need to do is take a look at a website and read through it and see what you need to buy. Now I'll put all the videos to the build in the description and I hope you uh, have a good time watching all of these and we'll talk about how to build a water cooling loop.